Hi everybody, Professor Gassimi here, and in this component of the lecture, we will be discussing responsive design. Uh, as always, please take a look at some of the suggested readings to get some interactive tips and exercises to facilitate your learning here. So responsive design is not really even a topic or a recommended thing. It's actually essential for contemporary web design techniques. And when we say that a website is responsive, we're really speaking about the behavior that you're seeing on the GIF here on the right-hand side. When you are resizing a browser, the fact that the, the content reacts to the size of your browser or that when you view, I don't know, LinkedIn or Facebook through your mobile phone, again, through the web, not through the app, that it looks reasonable and you can navigate it just as well as you could if you were on your desktop, that's what we mean by responsive design. And as we spoke about in our lecture last week, if a website is not mobile friendly because most people are accessing content through their mobile phone, it's pretty much irrelevant these days. Like you need to have your websites be mobile friendly if you want a chance at them being used. The way that you create this kind of reactivity in your website is through something called a media query. It essentially allows you to run a series of tests, check whether a user's screen is greater than a certain width or resolution, and then selectively apply CSS to style the page appropriately. So let's show an example here together. What we have here is a regular grid layout. And in the last component of this lecture, we discussed the grid layout and you know how it's cool and we can easily lay out uh, rows and columns of content. This is the same example from that last component. What you might notice here is that as I take the display and I resize it, I've got here on the top right corner of the display GIF, the width and the height of that display. As I, as I change the height, nothing, nothing happens. As I change the width, nothing happens. But if I add a media query to it, like you're seeing at the bottom here now, as soon as that display gets bigger than a certain size, because I've set the min width to 600 pixels, I get a reaction you can see in the grid layout. It moves in this case from being a three column by two row to a one column layout once I get past a certain point. So it reacts to something about the size of the screen. The way to read one of these media queries is as follows. It always starts with you know, media screen, and then you specify some other properties in the query. In this case, you want the min width to be 600 pixels. If this criteria is satisfied, and that's what the media query checks for, it goes up here and takes this original wrapper and it overwrites or changes this content to whatever's in here. That is to say, once this criteria is met according to the media query, we want to change the display to grid. It was grid before, but we want to change the grid template columns to one FR. So we only want one column. That's the idea. And we want the column gap to be 5% as an example. So we can even change things like how much is the, um, the white space gap between these. Now for images, we can set the width to be equal to the width of a container as an easy way to ensure responsiveness. That is to say, if you have a grid layout on your page, and for example, you had two columns of content, maybe the image is on the left, the text is on the right, and you want to make this responsive, well, if you have it within a grid and you use that media query, as long as the image is set to be 100% the size of its containing div, then you get this nice, beautiful, responsive effect like I'm showing there on the right-hand side. When it comes to making your text responsive, the easiest way to do this is actually using the calc function, which is something that we had spoken about in previous components of this lecture. What you can do is you can set the font size of any of your elements, the H1s and the Ps as an example, to be some standard size, 1EM. This is the font size relative to the parent, remember? So this is like a baseline, plus let's say 5% of the viewing width or 2% of the viewing width or whatever you want. And then as you scale and contract or increase and decrease the size of your display, you will see the size of the font increasing and decreasing proportionally. 
This is a nice trick so that you don't have to have a media query, but can still get beautiful, responsive font that looks good on a mobile phone, it looks good on a tablet, it looks good on a web browser, and so on. Another thing to note is that when you're going to use um, or build responsive content, you always want to have the viewport meta tag available in the top of the document. It just makes sure that you're setting the viewport of the device width and scale uh, to scale the document to 100%. So what I want you to conclude from this is that responsive design is essential for contemporary web design. Um, by using a flexible grid, you only need to add in a breakpoint and change the design at the point where the content starts to look bad. So I really recommend the use of grids when possible. Elements within a responsive grid can themselves be made responsive, like the image example we showed. The calc function can be used to scale text based on screen size. And you can set the width of the viewport to the device width and scale the document to 100% using meta.